And these are his exact words. I remember this well. He's like, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you this straight up. You don't have to come to the rest of the practices. You're all good kids. You're trying hard. But I don't want to put you on the team if I'm just going to have you on the bench all year. <laughs> you know, there's always hope. We're always going to believe in next year. Yeah. So today I decided to do Jays because at the end of the day, <laughs> we're entering into baseball season and I really want to believe that uh, we can do it. Oh, there's still time. Yeah. There's still time. We can turn it around. Again. We're back. We're here. Wow. We're back again. <laughs> How's it uh, all jade up. Oh, yeah. We got our jays. It's a really good time to be a fan of sports in Toronto. <laughs> it is. It is. But listen, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, we talked about in our last podcast about loyalty. So we're just, we're bringing it. But before we, yep. we get there, yep. before we get there, we want to just sort of let everybody know that this is the last week for you guys to enter into the Jam Boutique giveaway, which is the diffuser. You get the essential oils and you actually get the room spray. Yeah. So thank you once again to Jam. Oh my goodness, thank Austin. It was very generous that they donated. Yeah. It smells great too. It's amazing. And, and they've yeah. got a ton of different essential oils. A ton. This oh, is a, this we're is just one. giving away yeah. one. Um, a, as well as a lot more products. And yeah. I'll tell you, the more research I've done about this boutique, they're available in all kinds of different grocery stores mm. in all across Ontario. So we're going to give a shout out to Jam. We're we're giving a shout out to Mel yep. um, and thank you again. So in order for them to be able to win this giveaway, which we will ship to you, yep. you've got to like the video. You've got to add a comment yep. in any of our videos. Any of our videos. That's the thing. Just leave a comment and it can be anything. It can be as simple as, hey guys, like the video. It could be Hey, here's something you guys could talk about next week. It could be, I'm only here for the prize. Give me the prize. Either way, <laughs> you'll be entered. You'll be entered. But they also won't get entered if they don't subscribe to the channel. Mm -hmm. So everybody, we're putting this out there. We are we are getting to a thousand subscribers. We're on a we really do need your help. Yeah. Uh, and that will also enter you uh, as well into the giveaway. But we do have another sponsor. Say what? I know. We Who do. Who is the sponsor? Well, I'll tell you. There's a, a pub in Whippy called the Oak and uh. Ale. Uh, and again, we kind of just want to let everybody know, I hope that you can see that gift certificate here. <laughs> they are a pub. They have a pub in North Whippy. They have a pub in South Whippy. Uh, they have graciously uh, donated a $100 gift certificate. That's a good gift certificate. I'm telling you, it's incredible. Yeah. So... You can enter as well this week. Yep. Uh, whoever does, like, like, make a comment, and subscribe. I'm feeling very giving today, Austin. You're such a generous person. Thank you. I think so. You really are. Because you know what I think that we're going to do, if what you're okay with it? I think we're going to enter them not only in the Jam Boutique for this particular episode only, but also in the Okanale. A two for one? Let's give away two. That's you never insane. know. Insane! You're so generous. <laughs> We're so generous. So, anyways, <laughs> with that, let's get her going, kids. Let's do it. Let's, let's get do her it. going. So, listen. From a young age, I mean, you'll know this. My brother was always the big, big sports guy. He was. Oh. He was into every sport imaginable. Fanatical. Ho hockey, yep. football, rugby. Yep. He was into all of it. Typically, I never was. I was always the kid that, well, as viewers will obviously know by now, I was the kid who liked to be on the computer, who liked to read, who liked to play video games. There was a team that I did follow, though, and that team was our good old Toronto Maple Leafs. 
the yeah. old reliable. You were saying about how we've talked about it. Loyalty is very, very important yep. to us, and yeah. it is. It does hurt sometimes, though, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, uh, I chose today to put on our Jay's, my Jay's shirt. You followed suit. Yeah. Uh, uh, because sadly the Leafs are out of the playoffs. Uh, the last time that they won was the year I was born, 1967. Um, and you know, the, I, we always have hope, but the bottom line is, I think for anybody that uh, are diehard Leaf fans, as I am, mm -hmm. your brother is, yep. your father is, you are, even though you're not, huge into sports, uh, you know, there's always hope. We're always going to believe in next year. Yeah. So today I decided to do Jays because at the end of the day, <laughs> we're <laughs> entering into baseball season and I really want to believe that uh, we can do it. Oh, there's still time. Yeah. There's still time. We can turn it around. But, you know, you were a kid that definitely did uh, – wasn't as interested in the sports side as your brother. You, but you're very two different individuals for sure. Yeah. But there were times that um, I know that your dad and I did try to get you to be a little bit more involved. Yep. It started very young um, when we would, I say we, but really it was your dad would build a nice rink in, yes, in our backyard. Yeah. Uh, every year we kind of tried to to make it a little better so it didn't leak out and so forth. It was always a production, but you know, you can only get better and better with the ice rink. rink because, yeah. But it ended up being quite, quite good. We used to, we started buying the, the plastic bags, the inserts. You were yeah. very young, you might not remember, but you know, we did it because your brother from a very young age, from the time he was walking, really enjoyed watching the Leafs with your dad. He I did. mean, it yeah. was always on and he just sort of grew his passion at just his character. So he yeah. would, we just knew very little that, you know, we needed to get him on skates right? and we needed to get him skating. And the best way to do it was to do it in our backyard. Oh, for sure. Um, and I remember when you were just under two, you know, we were like, okay, you're probably ready to be on skates. <laughs> and uh, we would take you out. Andrew would be, you know, doing his best to whiz around. He would be about four years old. And we started kind of guiding you on the ice rink. And, and a lot of times you were like... <laughs> Take me inside. It's oh, cold. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it just wasn't your gig. No. But you did end up uh, in public school. Uh, and I'm not even sure why. Maybe you can kind of refresh my memory a little bit. But I remember at Pierre Elliott Trudeau when it opened, mm -hmm. I remember they had this big field and they had yes. a soccer team. Um, and I want to say you would have been in about grade four, maybe, because you ended up uh, yeah. on the soccer team. For a very, very brief period, I did. Like this, this was a while ago. I don't have too many good memories of it, but oh, soccer, good. <laughs> soccer was one of those sports where I guess I had an interest in it, I guess, more in concept than anything else, because you have like this big field, you had the players running back and forth. You had the goalies with the big wide nets. And that, I think, was what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a goalie. But okay. uh, that did not pan out. I just ended up as one of the regular I mean, you made players. the team. I, remem I remember that. Like, you actually did do a few games. A couple of A couple. Games. Yeah. Let's, let's then, be clear here. A couple. <laughs> and then I got the call. Yeah. From the coach. <laughs> And that was kind of more or less like, listen, I mean, he's a part of the team. We love him, but this isn't his gig. Yeah, like like I said, I my dream was to be a goalie. I was not. I was just one of the regular players. Yep. And yep. just straight up, I was not really a runner at that point in my life. And I was not good at kicking the ball, <laughs> which is... <laughs> The whole a pretty, concept a pretty of important part of soccer, so it has been explained to Do me. Do you know what, my mind now, it's going back to memories. Do you know what is so funny about how you said you weren't really a runner? The interesting thing about you and your brother raising you, because Andrew was just so 
athletic. Like he was just so he was involved. Yeah. Like he wanted to ride his bike. He wanted to do that. Like it was just the sports side of him was really first and foremost. It was always. But strong. I remember before we bought the cottage and we had the trailer. I remember there was this big, big, big field where we would play baseball and do all kinds of that stuff. And then because, I mean, clearly we were a very competitive family, uh, it always became about races. Yep. <laughs> right? Like it always ended up becoming, Some, okay. Somehow it always know, turned to uh, that. I guess it's the easiest way Andrew to Andrew and I are going to be in a race, Mom, and can you time us? And can you make sure he, you know, he doesn't cheat? And Andrew would be like, can you make sure that Austin doesn't cheat? And you always were faster than your brother. You won the races. You would start off, Austin, and it would be like, right? And then your brother would get really mad. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's interesting. Now, going going further in, do you, there was a time that you tried out for football, didn't you? Yes, I did in grade nine, my first year of high school. Right. And... <laughs> I remember that vividly because it's actually a pretty funny story. It wasn't funny at the time, but looking back, it's actually quite hilarious. So as I've mentioned before, I wasn't really into sports. You and dad were really, really wanted me to, when I entered high school, at least give it a try to try out for something to see if maybe I could find that spark. Maybe if you liked it. Yeah, yeah. see. Okay, so right. So you and dad were like, okay, listen, you're going into high school you're going to try out for the football team. They've got the early tryouts before school officially starts, where it's a week long. It's sort of like a training camp, for lack of a better word. And you're like, okay, listen, you're going to give it a shot, see what happens. And I, I didn't want and to. And we said football? You said football. I did not want to at the time, but... Okay. I, no, I either for you, sure you wouldn't want you, to. You and dad were like, no, you're doing this. And Okay. Yeah, there was... There was no way out for me. So I was like, sorry about okay, that. fine, I'll I'm do sorry. it. I'm sorry. I don't so, remember that. Listen, I'll say this. I was not interested in being on that team, but I did genuinely try. Like, I gave it an effort. I was there for three days of the five days. I did all the training, all that stuff, running back and forth, tackling dummies, things like that. And on the end of the third day... The football coach pulls me and a couple kids aside, and these are his exact words. I remember this well. He's like, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you this straight up. You don't have to come to the rest of the practices. You're all good kids. You're trying hard. But I don't want to put you on the team if I'm just going to have you on the bench all year. <laughs> Right. You just didn't make the cut, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. And like he was and laying there was it nothing yeah. else that you would have liked to have done. I mean, the thing about high school is they had rugby teams, football teams, they have basketball, volleyball. They could have had a lot I more. Might, I might have done a brief stint with like some volleyball club in high school, like which was not like a formal team, but just sort of like a during lunch, sometimes it would have like little tournaments that maybe I did a couple times, but that was about it. Like, to be clear, like very much when I say like my interest was not in sports, I really mean it. You, like, maybe Austin, that's when we were like, I, I, I'm trying to remember, uh, and I apologize to everybody for, for having a bit of a failed memory sometimes. Um, I feel like because you were so into your own space, as we've talked about through other previous episodes, yeah. I think what your dad and I were really trying you to do was to get you to kind of go outside your box. Try yeah. to say, at least try it. I remember on an episode of a while back, we talked about how it's so easy to think that you don't like a food. And I remember saying to you for my entire life, I I didn't like mushrooms. And then one day as an adult, I tried it. And like, yes. oh my God, I yes, like them, did. right? Yeah. Like it, you have that preconceived notion, I don't like sports, but yet you really weren't involved in doing a lot. So maybe that's where we were coming yeah. from was just to say, try it. If it doesn't work, we're good. Yeah. But you ended up being involved anyways in the music. 
Yes. Right? I you was in were, a lot of bands. You were in the band, the school band. You also were in the theater. Yep. Um, theater class, drama theater club, class, I guess drama it was class, called. A bunch of, yeah. So you, you did end up joining other... I found my <laughs> interests. They just weren't... They just ended up not being in the sports. And I think also, I think a part of it was, as I did mention, I think in one of our earliest episodes, for me, high school was a t- an experience that at least then... I did not really view in the best light Mm -hmm. where it was a lot of where my mental health started to really deteriorate. I was having issues focusing. I was having issues finding enjoyment in things. But one of those lights that I did find was, I guess, in the arts. You're very, very good at it. Drama was once I started it in grade 10, it was always my favorite class. It was where I felt like I was coming alive, mm-hmm. really. And I remember in those drama classes, I think at the end of my grade 11 year, what we would do every morning when we had that class was we would all sit in a circle. The teacher would give us a short prompt of something to say, and we would all go around and answer it, whatever that prompt was. That was sort of our attempt way of taking attendance. Mm-hmm. And the final prompt of the year was for everyone to pick someone and to give their impressions of where they started and where they ended. And eventually it got to be my turn. And what everyone was saying at the very end was, I think we really underestimated him because he came into this class being, you know, the quiet, shy, more reserved guy who doesn't say much. But whenever it was time to go, I would come alive and I would give it everything I had. And they were like, oh, wow, he really has something. Wow. You know what, Austin? That goes in line with, um, and maybe maybe I'm repeating myself too much, but that goes in line with what so many people that are watching you on this podcast are like, I didn't know he could be so vocal. I didn't know he could be so animated. (laughs) I didn't, him behind a microphone, Tara, like, you know, I, I've said this before, I get it over and over again. And, and as your parent, you know, I knew, I, we always knew you had it in you because how you were quiet around other people, as we now know with your diagnosis of social anxiety, you know, now as an adult, when we got that diagnosis, we kind of see why you were a little you, bit more introverted. It makes go, sense. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's why when we took him out, he would cling to us and yeah. he didn't really like to talk to people or it took you a long time to be comfortable yeah to talk to people, even as a toddler. And it makes sense because even back then, like I guess the diagnosis of social anxiety wasn't really a thing. Like before people were studying brains more and more and figuring out, oh, these are the common signs that someone has anxiety. Right. People would go, oh, he's just shy. But Austin, I never took you to get diagnosed. No. That's what I'm no, saying. But, but I mean, like that was yeah. the common consensus at the time. Oh, they're just shy. They'll grow out of it or... Oh, we just need to expose That's them a good to point. other things. But you know, they're just shy. Why are they shy? But eventually it yeah. turns out, oh, there actually is like a verifiable reason why they are like that. But my point going going back was uh, you were different at home. You were quiet at home. Like, believe me, when you would come home and you'd like to do your own thing. Yeah. But you had no problem expressing your opinion, you know, good, bad, or ugly. Like, you know what I mean? In, in With us, with yeah. your dad, with myself, with your brother. Like, you know, you were completely open and completely yourself. Yeah. Right? Um, and I remember when we put you into music lessons outside mm-hmm. of school. Yes. Uh, and then 
you and your brother both joined the one in Curtis. I wish I could remember the name of it, but I remember the owner's name was Mark. Millennium Music. Millennium Music. Yep. Shout out, Mark. Um, just a fantastic place. And, yeah. and you wanted to do the guitar, so we bought you an acoustic <clears throat> guitar. Yep. Your brother had decided that he wanted to do drums, so we ended up getting him a drum set, yep. Yep. which we set up in the basement. <laughs> oh, 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 that was loud. Oh, yeah. Um, but we would take you every Wednesday, and you had every single Wednesday, you, you both had music lessons at the same time. Yeah. Um, and in those music lessons was when you, uh, once a year, there was a concert. Right. Right? Yeah. And I remember because you guys did, you did music separately, you, it wasn't yeah. one music, you weren't together at Millennium Music in a room no. together learning drums we and guitar. Doing our own thing. You both yeah. had your own teachers. You just went at the same time. Yeah. And I remember thinking, how is he going to get on the stage and perform in front of, let's say, 100 people? Like, right. you know, even though as kindergarten you would do, like, you know, your kindergarten plays, your yeah. grade one plays, you would do, but you were with a group. Of you were course. with your whole class. Yeah. And I remember your first solo that you did um, and you getting up there. Not only did you have to play, but you also had to sing. Yes. Yes, I did. And you got up there. It was your turn to start. And I was looking at you and you did it. It was like none of us were there. You know, and I, and I remember sitting there going, oh my goodness, like he doesn't even look like he's afraid. You just did it. Yeah. Right. And I think that's what's surprising people is because they only know you as being just more reserved and quiet. Of, and yet they're course, seeing yeah. this whole come out here. Yeah. And I think that's, I think you're right. Like, I think when it comes to those performances, like, especially that one, I do remember where I just sort of turn everything off and focus on my performance above all else, which also transitioned into my drama class. Like, I remember one of the final cumulative projects, we used to call it, where between that and the exam was worth, like, 30% of your mark. Our final... Uh, project was actually a performance we would be doing in front of like an actual audience of people coming in to see it. Like it was a school production yes. basically yep. where it was us in pairs and we were doing basically different plays depending on what we picked. And I remember the scene I got and the girl I was performing it with, like we were both really, really nervous before, which happens to me all the time. Like I'm always nervous before sure. going in front of a crowd. I think a lot of people are. I think mm -hmm. that's just a common thing. Stage fright's common. But I also remember the girl I was performing with, she was like having a full on, I would say close to like a panic attack mm -hmm. where she was like, I can't do this. I can't go up. Oh, bless her heart. And oh, boy. I had that moment where I was terrified too. Mm-hmm. But in that moment, I just went into full performance mode. And I mm -hmm. was like, okay, listen, what we're about to do on stage is no different from the dozens of times we've practiced it, just you and me. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that we're going to have to pause occasionally to let the audience stop laughing. Right, right. So just do it like that. And that's how I viewed my performance. I would go on stage, I'm like, the audience doesn't matter. All that matters is the person I'm performing with and going back and forth with her. And we did it. And I remember vividly, I don't like to be a bragger, but just straight up, I think we got the loudest applause that night. Sure, sure. And that's what it comes down to is like, and I think that's also part of why I like to be a voice actor is just getting into that character, getting into that zone. I love it. Right. I absolutely love doing that. And I think that's where I find my bursts of energy, where I find my passion, where I'm able to go, okay, the anxiety for these next few minutes doesn't exist. I think it becomes uh, a way for you to get away, you mm -hmm. know? And maybe that's part of your mental health journey is for you to become 
these characters, you're kind of stepping into a whole new role. Yeah. Right? But yet, it really is a part of you. And and I love that as people watch these podcasts that we do, I love that um, they're getting to know you uh, so much more, you know, and, and I, yeah. you know, I, that's amazing kid. And, and, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna finish it off. Yep, yep. <laughs> Time goes by very quickly, <laughs> but you know, our, our, we're really hoping that, uh, the Jays maybe will pull it off this year. I think I might continue for the next few podcasts to kind of support, our <laughs> <laughs> support, support our team, you know, um, but, but, we don't want to forget that we do have the giveaway to the Oak and the Ale. Yes, we do. A uh, $100 gift card. Please don't forget that we have our Jam Boutique giveaway with the diffuser. We've got the essential oils. In Austin, we've got the room spray. Yep. Right? Today is the last week. You want to remind everybody what they got to do? It's three simple things. All you got to do is you got to leave a like, leave a comment in any of our videos. Mm -hmm. And you got to subscribe. You got to subscribe. So with yeah. that, I love doing this with you. I love doing this with you. All right, kid. Let's do her. All right.